So, hey, everyone. Hi. Welcome to the third episode. You did it. That was my line. Oh. Welcome to the third episode of Schooled. Welcome. I'm excited to be here. One week Me later. Me too. I'm, I'm glad you're excited to be here. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be kind of weird if you weren't. Yeah. So on today's episode, I will be doing the first human evidence of humans found in North America. All right. And you will be doing. I'm doing the history of toilet paper. Oh, shit. <laughs> exactly. Wow. I have so many comments. You said shit, so I said. Sure. I have so many comments, but I will wait. I will I will hold them for later. It's probably appropriate. Okay. So if you want to hear the full episode, click on the link below for the full version so you can listen on your listening platform of choice. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can get all our new episodes. We do this weekly. All right. We try to. Yeah. Okay. Before we begin, I want to talk about last week's episode. When I was sporting my Dallas Cowboys gear in honor of Wild Card Weekend, and you pointed out, and I... I openly admit I had a very uh, bad attitude, I'll say, about the game even before it had begun. And what what happened? Um, they didn't do very well. No, they didn't. That might be an under. That might be. It's, a... it's the like if you look at the end score, you're like, oh, that was a high scoring game. Okay, not the first half. Yeah, the um, first half was rough. Yeah, so true to form. My Dallas Cowboys disappointed me. I didn't know that they were going to disappoint me as brutally as they did, but better luck next year. Yeah. I found a good a piece of equipment in Zelda oh, during the game. So great. I'm, I'm glad that you were able to do that. Yeah. I, I will say that. I also got some new screwdrivers when I had to leave, leave after the loss. While I was watching the game, I was making a lot of concerning noises and you didn't check on me once <laughs> were you just ignoring it or you no just i just i honestly felt bad because <laughs> it was so so rough and i know how much you wanted them to win and i just felt i felt bad for you so i didn't yeah there's nothing i'm gonna be able to say to make that make that right no it wasn't really your fault if anything i would say i, I, I showed wisdom for not saying okay stuff you're not wrong Every every now and again, and I'm sorry, babe, goes a long way. Okay. Okay. Point taken. Okay. All right. Before I begin, do you have anything? Yeah, I do have something. Is actually. it is it again about timing people walking out of Target and no. on escalators? Okay. No, but maybe equally stupid. <laughs> okay. So, I thought that was brilliant. So I have a prop here that I would like to bring in. And so bear with me. I'm going to move the mic and then move it back. Oh, it's important, though. Okay. All right. Oh, Let's just go ahead and slide this this guy on for a second. <laughs> All right. So, little backstory. This I bought this coat maybe fifteen years ago, mm. maybe twenty years ago, and at the time I thought it was really cool. Can I just describe this coat for was, people well, who I are was, not watching? You describe it first, and then I will. Okay. If you would have shown me that coat, I would have said it came out of your grandfather's closet as a pimp coat. It's <laughs> suede, I'm assuming. Is that made of suede? Yeah, it's like soft leather. Is that what, is that what suede is? I don't know, to be honest. With a fur-lined inside, and it's like oversized. It doesn't fit you. Right. So you, I, I won't really am still convinced that you got that out of your grandfather's closet. All right. So this is my description. Okay. It's got a it's got a lovely interior. <laughs> Looks are not as important to me as as feel. And it's a, it's got a nice heaviness to it. It's very warm. And I just think it I just think it has a lot of character. Okay. So the reason I brought it on I know. the show Oh, is, I know why you brought it on. It's not what you think. Oh, okay. Well, it probably is. So I'm I'm going to make I'm going to um, ask, inf there's influencers, right? Those are people that, 
people that actually people pay other people pay attention to and buy. Right. Could you guys please make this coat cool again? Because <laughs> that's the only way Jen's going to let me not. Right. Let me keep it and not have to throw it away. I should I post a picture of you in the coat because you're sitting down, so it's like kind of hard to tell. Yeah, you could if you want. Okay. Like I'm the... gonna move the mic away. And, okay. And oh, so you're not gonna do the whole episode no. in your pimp coat? No. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate how much you love this article of clothing and want to keep it. Fifteen years ago. Yeah. So. If anyone could make that coat cool again, and I, I'd, owe, I'd owe you one. That's all I got. All right. All right, babe, listen, I'm rooting for you. I'm not sure who you think is going to change my mind on that, but okay. So, and we're off. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. So my topic. Giddy up. <laughs> okay. So my topic, just to remind everyone, because you just took me on a whirlwind trip there, um, was, oh, the first. I really messed you up. You really did. (laughs) The first human footprints found in North America. Okay. Yeah. So I always like to say why I chose my topic, because I think it's the journey is just as important as learning facts. So uh, I actually, I, I actually researched this topic several several weeks ago and to be honest i forgot about it and then (laughs) last week go check out last week's episode where brian did the oldest human remains found yeah oldest yeah fossils same thing okay so last sorry it was homo sapiens homo sapiens oh okay i thought it was safe safe ians no remember we yeah julio julio helped us okay so you you did that episode and you had some follow-up action items from that episode and you sent me a very nice email. I would like to read this email. Oh, boy. <laughs> I thought this was, I didn't realize it was going to be part of the show. No, if you send me something this stupid, I'm going to put it on the show. All right. So Brian had some action items from the last show. <laughs> One action item we have together is to go to Target and start stop watching people getting out of the way after they exit exit the building the second action item was you needed to send me a whole bunch of links to things so here's the which i made good on you did and here here's the here's the email that you sent to me it says jennifer so formal i hope this email finds you well it was great working slash collaborating with you yesterday I found it to be entertaining and also mind expanding. I'm so glad. I hope that everyone feels that way. Here is the information you requested. This first link contains a picture that does an outstanding job of describing the migration patterns of Homo sapiens in a picture form. Thank you. After all, a picture does say a thousand words, (laughs) which is true. And then what what happened? Because your email cut off and I got a second email. Yeah, this this stupid fucking Chromebook. (laughs) Like sometimes when I hit control C and control V and I'm trying to copy Copy stuff, it just hits. It sends the email. Hmm. So I'm either tapping something or it doesn't happen to any other computer. I'm thinking this is user error. Yeah, Yeah. maybe. Yeah. Okay. so here's here's the follow up email that I got. Yeah, to send you three, I think, to get all of it over to you. Jennifer. As embarrassing as it is to say, sometimes technology gets the best of me and I inadvertently sent the last email in an incomplete state. (laughs) Thank you for explaining. Yeah. I hope this does negative, this does negatively impact. Did you mean does not? It does. Yeah. I meant to say does not. I hope I'm just going to read it. as. I'll send you another email to to, to apologize apologize. for that. I'll read that next week. I hope this does not negatively impact our future interactions and collaboration. Here is a link to the map that shows the oldest fossil was around 300 years ago. What? Oldest fossil, which was around 300,000. That was the whole, my whole topic on the last show. I didn't click on any of the links, so I'm not sure what the second link is, but I'm definitely going to link them in the show. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I found that to be entertaining. But before I begin. Oh, you oh. you should have 
the last email that I sent you is way better. Oh man, it's the best one. I didn't. I don't have it. Oh, because I because I did the control V again and it <laughs> sent early. <laughs> and then there was other links because I wanted to show you. The, Do you have it? Um, let's see here. If you you can start yours and then. Why would I do that? Well, because I don't have my. I want for you to fumble through this account. and for people to figure out how. But I don't have my, my how, email account because. How slow. I figured it. You, you are with technology. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that. Do, 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 do. Here's what I thought. If somebody mm-hmm. is going to take the time to bring up a topic. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is trying to get me to buy Outlook. <laughs> Wait, how did you email me this stuff in the first place if you don't even have Outlook on your computer? I do. I just logged out. Boy, you better fill this. You better fill this up with. Plus, I don't know how to get to my sent items. <laughs> oh this my is God. just this is just ridiculous. Uh, so is the last email you sent me a complete listing of all the links that I was supposed to get? Because I remember one of the things was a picture of the first skull that was ever found. Seriously, guys, you should really go listen to this episode because it was, to me, entertaining. All right. So I think you just didn't copy all the thing down. Okay. So the rest of the email. For the final visual... I would like to present you a picture of the fossil found at the Jebel Hirud juxtaposed with the skull from the Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. Oh, God. <laughs> and then there's a, a link to the fossil. Okay. And then there's a link to the 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 monkey skull with the, the brains actual, in it from. Mm-hmm. And then. Which is what we think with the guy that did with the skull that kept it as a souvenir for however many years. Right. And so the link that I sent you for the skull, mm-hmm. I said. The skull from the Temple of Doom is paired with a lovely op-ed piece about the accuracy of the movie. Whoever wrote this article, it's flipping hilarious. And there's a link, obviously. Okay. And, um, you know, somebody on the internet said, how accurate is the Indian Jones in the Temple of Doom? And then I won't ruin the person's response because it was hysterical and I had nothing to do with it. Is this on Reddit? I have no idea. Oh. But there is a link. Okay. Oh, Qora, Q, that one that one website where you can ask questions and okay, okay. We should probably cut all of that out. That was really painful. Me, yeah. tr- me trying to uh, okay click on stuff. Before I begin with the first footsteps found in North America, I wanted to lay some things to rest with some questions that I asked you last week that I know. That everyone else is dying to know as well. Okay. My first question was, is what was the climate like 300,000 years ago? And I made the assertion that the ice age was around that time because to be quite honest, I have no idea. But based on what I'm about ready to tell you about the first North American footsteps is going to answer that question. But I will just tell you that the climate in Africa was basically like a grassland. It was warm. You know. All the way from north to south. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, the second thing that I asked is where is Africa in comparison to Florida? Oh yeah. That was, <laughs> that really threw me for a loop. So I asked so many annoying questions. I'm so sorry. And I'm, I'm also sorry about the Eskimos that I brought up about 10 times. I thought it was fine. I will do a podcast on the Eskimos because I found that to be fascinating. Yeah. So um, here's like a map that I found that, and I will post this, but you can see here on this picture. Can you see my screen? I can. And I can see Africa and Florida. (laughs) Africa is in direct line with Florida. I can't believe, I mean, granted Africa takes up almost half the globe. Right. So, you know, that was probably pretty safe, but I see where you're saying um, the, the biggest width of Africa is definitely in line with Florida. Yeah. So that's great. (laughs) Now we know. Yeah. Okay. I'll link it below. You just have I'll like like put it like right here. You just have a gut feel about geography. Sure. Actually I'm 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 really terrible actually about geography. That was amazing though. Okay. And the the most I would have bet just so you know I would have bet money against that. Really? That guess. Yeah. I just it didn't seem 
to line up correctly. Well, but. you still owe me five bucks about Pluto. So <sighs> actually, actually, I never looked that up. I'm still waiting for someone to tell me if Pluto. Yeah, it's not a planet, but yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see. How do you know? How can you make that assertion if you don't actually know? I do. I remember. I remember the whole yeah, shebang. But I, thought, I thought they put it back in. I thought they were like, ah, you can come back, buddy. Like it had hurt feelings. So. <laughs> I don't know. It's like you can just be a dwarf planet. Like everybody, and... everybody wins. Everybody gets a trophy. Yeah. Okay. You're like kind kind of like they had sold a whole bunch of like solar system. Pluto's yeah. dead to me, <laughs> so I don't care what what the news says. Okay. All right. Well, let's see what bets we can place this time. So the question, the last question that I asked you was something that I had already researched and forgot about. And that was your whole thing last week was the first humans found and there was all in Africa. And I said, when were the first humans found in North America? And you were like, fuck you, I think is what you said. <laughs> yeah. Well, you said that could be the You said the answer can be fuck you. And that's what I answered. Yeah. Understood. I probably wouldn't have said that if you didn't give you the give option. Me, yeah, the option. That's okay. not typically how I talk. So when do scientists think that, that people arrived in North America? Take a guess. Oh, don't look, um, don't look no, screen. I'm not going to look. I mean, it was the last ice age. I don't know what time. Dang it. You're so right. So. I mean, I remember that from school. I just. Oh, okay. I don't remember the timing. Well, then why did you say fuck you last week? You could have you could have answered my question. I did not think about it. <laughs> I was still thinking about my topic, just... which was the oldest fossils. Okay. okay. So it's theorized that people migrated to North America in 13,000 BC when the Ice Age was ending and the, the retreating walls between uh, Siberia to Alaska created the Bering Strait and people could just like cross yeah. from Siberia to Alaska. I, I That part I actually remember. Yeah. So they, they just kind of walked across it and here's like a map that I'll, I'll post to it. So it's just kind of like they came from here to here and I'll post just kind of like, cause a picture, cool. a picture says a thousand words. It really does. I know. Right. So yeah, they just, they kind of just like walked. So, oh, here's, oh, and here's another like migratory thing, but that's too small to even look at, but it absolutely has the, what, what you were talking about last week with all the places that the things were found, found. So yeah. anyway, that's, that's actually the link I sent you. Oh, that's that cool. one map that's that, you just, that you fl flipped up there. Yeah. That was one of the links I sent you. So here's what I was thinking. You really bridged the two weeks together. I know. You just have to bridge an episode. I just bridged. The two weeks together and i'm gonna do it again because you want you want to know what i was thinking when i was doing this is that you know how they were like christopher columbus discovered america 1492 sailed the ocean blue and i even as a child was like okay you're telling me that the earth was around for millions of years before that and people have been around for i don't know th i guess maybe i said thousands i don't know in my child brain i was like there's no way that no one set foot on america before christopher columbus and then i was thinking while i was doing this like i thought that as a child and then while i was doing this episode i was thinking that he had a better pr rep than elliot ness <laughs> because that guy's got his own day named after him and for centuries, we celebrated him and he didn't even do it. Right. And he was an asshole. Well, and and I don't they think it's not even him as the first European anymore, too. I oh, think, gosh. I, think, I don't know. I don't know. It's another episode. You get my point, though. But uh, yeah, the Native Americans were here long before. Right. OK. So how do we know? What evidence do we have supporting 13,000 B.C.? So we found... We scientists, I always take the credit. <laughs> I don't mean you mean I, the human race as, sure. as a whole. Found. When I say we, you guys, I, I mean no, I had no part in any of this. 21,000 to 23,000 years ago, uh, we discovered okay, sorry, we discovered them now. We've, we discovered footprints that we believed are from 21,000 to 23,000 years ago. Um, so 10,000 years ago, the ecosystem of North America was much different. 
it was a grassland and it had a lake o- o- t- oh i'm gonna butcher this lo- lake Ontario. in um i actually have a picture it's in new mexico and that but that that area that region suffered a century long drought and the lake became muddy which fossilized these footprints oh that's cool it is cool and i have a picture of these footprints right here oh, that's that neat. they found that's and really I'll, I'll, I'll link to that too yeah so they found all these footprints and they found them in i white... mean those are just for people that aren't looking those are raised footprints like yeah. perfectly intact that's really neat right well they probably took their time with sure their little, sure but i mean their little that feather picture dusters. is really I yeah mean, it's clearly footprints Cle- clearly footprints and where they found them was white sands national park new mexico um and i have like a picture of that too and it's beautiful i just put that there because i literally just thought that that was beautiful yeah that does look pretty white sands literally is what that is and it just looks like a barren desert right so how did we determine that these were 21,000 years ago. So I'm going to bridge to last week's episode again, because how they determined how old this was, was luminescence testing. Oh, remember I said that I had done research on it. I just honestly couldn't remember for what, and it was for this. So that this is another reason why I chose to do this That's awesome. this week. I'm just next week. I'll do something totally different, but so basically, um, like you didn't, you kind of described this, but like how, how I understand it just for everyone who didn't listen to last week's episode, like they should. So basically <laughs> like they should, you're kind of like scolding people. Yes, I am. So obviously 21,000 years ago, it's been covered up by dirt and it hasn't seen the light of day for a long time. We'll just say everything has a natural sense, a natural source of like radioactivity to it. So when something has not seen light for that long, they can measure how old it is by how fast the exposure, light exposure accumulates on it. And then they can take, um, they took quartz from like the same level of ground and did the same thing. They, 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 they saw how fast that uh, they can measure the age by re-exposing them to light and measuring emitted light. And then they did a whole bunch of scientific that's cool. that's, that calculations. Is, that's very similar to how they did the, uh, yeah. did the one I was Yeah, doing, it's re-exposing it to yeah. light. And they can see how fast it that's really neat. starts to emit the light. Yeah. They can do some cool stuff. Yeah, they really can. So I I was kind of like, well, who are these people? And what 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 did what did it show? And the thing that was the, the coolest thing about it is that from the footprints, they can actually see that like a woman and a toddler were walking side by side together. Wow. And then at some point, the woman like picked the toddler up because the footprints got heavier. In, oh, my gosh. In the that mud. is so cool. Yeah. So you can even tell like what they were doing at the time based on footprints. Even back then, kids wanted to be carried. That is wild. Right. And then another one is that they could point, they saw that they followed this found footprints of hunters tracking a sloth oh that's cool yeah it was really do you think cool. the kid do you think the kid was like oh, my feet are uh, yeah get me in a stroller uh, I want, in a stroller. i'm hungry yeah right and they're finally like shut up, and they pick them up. <laughs> i wonder if they got that sloth okay that was basically mine cool yeah it's pretty cool that is really cool Okay, so mine's a little different. I'm excited. So board the train here. Um, I'm also going to have to read some of mine. It's going to be. Okay. We'll see how that works out. Okay. There's too many like facts for me to remember all of the stuff. My brain is just I, not. I understand. I really do. Okay, so you did. I thought it was first humans in North America. Some, it's the same thing, right? Yeah. A little, little different, but. Yeah. So uh, we live in the Midwest area. And in the Midwest, I don't think a lot of people know about it, but there's Cahokia Mountains. And so when you said first, you know, first settlers in North America, I was thinking, okay, well, I know that was old. And and what that is, that's a that's an area that's about ten miles east of St. Louis. Mm-hmm. And which I've never been to. And there's that I was actually going to bring that up because <laughs> it's so odd that you've lived here forever and you've never been it's there. It's like 
it's like living in St. Louis and never going to the arch. I feel like I know. I feel like there was I went on a field trip there every year as a kid, but nope. So it's about 10 miles east of St. Louis and the city, just to give you a little background there, the city, they, you know, piecing together the finds, there was like 120 mounds. There's one giant one that's still there. And they're mounds of what? Uh, it's, it's, they're dirt mounds. Mm. I don't, I mean, I don't know for sure the makeup because my, my topic is actually on toilet paper. So this is just the train to get there. I know you I know you love it when I say that. <laughs> I do. It's going to make me laugh every time. So the uh there's a big one which I've been to and that's when I was going to kind of give you trouble for never being there. But like the city there was like 6 miles in 6 square miles and I, I'm going to just it's 1600 hectare hectares because I think that sounds like a more impressive number. But at the peak of this But at, what does that mean? 6 square miles. Okay. So at the peak of their civilization, though, um, they they occupied, I should tell you the years, they occupied around 800 to 1400. Their peak was around 1100, and they had estimated 10 to 20,000 people that lived there. So. Oh, 1100 BC. AD. AD. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was, it's, you know, not too distant okay. compared to some of the stuff we've talked about. Can I pause for a second and ask you, didn't they change the BC and AD? Don't they call it something else now? Um, I think they do. Um, yeah, but people still know what you're talking about. I know. I think you're right, though. I think they call the BC is different now. Yeah. Okay. So 1100. 1100. And uh, just a, this is very, I'm just going to give you very high level, right? Of okay. what's going on here, but the descendants uh, of the people that lived in Cahokia Mounds later, they they can trace them to the Osage, Osage the Chick Chickasaw, and the Peoria um, ancestry. So those are different Native American uh -huh. tribes okay. groups. And so I thought that was pretty interesting. And and then I was just like, ten to twenty thousand people. Like, where did they all go to the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> you know. And so then, right. I, then I was like, you know, that's pretty gross. And then I was like, well, I wonder what the history of toilet paper is. So I just made a few, a few leaps. I think that they, yeah, when did they they're decide? logical. I think they're logical leaps, okay. but that's how I got to what is the history of toilet paper? Like, I can't wait. Like, I know they were a civilization based on corn. So do they use corn cobs? Let me take you on a journey around toilet paper I'm ready. surrounding toilet paper okay so in ancient rome they would actually use i'm going to warn you now this is kind of kind of nasty so they would use a sponge on a stick combined with gutter water like they had toilets but i mean these are not nice toilets and it, so a sponge on a stick combined with gutter water and then they would put the stick sponge sponge stick in like a pail of vinegar which you know is acidic so it did its job but then the next person would use the same that yeah would, like, burn or i don't even want to think and about also, it anymore they had a rain water runoff system but not a more sanitary solution no they did not have flush toilets i mean they they contributed a lot to um hygiene oh i've seen like, aqueducts pictures. I've seen pictures of like the poop holes. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty nasty, but equally nasty is how they cleaned up afterwards. Right. So just fast forward a little bit in the, in Western Europe, the wealthy would wipe themselves with wool, like linens, things like that, where the less wealthy people, now there's a lot of different things here. So I'm just going to read them off. They, they could use anything from going into a river to various materials such as rags, wood shavings, leaves, grass, hay, stones, sand, moss, sand. snow, snow or water, ferns, plants, husks, fruit skins, seashells. That one was mind boggling to me. Corn cobs, 
depending on the country. So remember when I was saying, did yeah. they use corn cobs? They probably did use corn cobs. This is just so. <laughs> gross right it's so gross it gets, it gets it makes way me better sad that like people only live on this planet for like a blip and like that was your life yeah yeah well what are you know they're gonna say the same thing about us someday so i i love my life yeah but they will say the same thing like sure. i can't believe they did that okay well i'm gonna write a note to them letting them know not to feel sorry for me right okay time capsule or yeah all right okay so all of that depended on weather conditions, like social norms, things like that. So a reference, first reference to toilet paper that I could find was um, it, it was a, dated back to 589 when the Chinese scholar official Yen Chin Tui Yan Zhi Tui. OK. OK. So I wrote that out phonetically, but definitely hacked it up. Sorry to any of his ancestors but he wrote this is a quote from something he wrote okay. paper on which there are quotations or commentaries from the five classics or names of sages i dare not use for toilet purposes which implies that other paper he would use right oh so, you know guy the guy you think it was single ply absolutely because <laughs> i know when double ply was invented oh, okay so during the 14th century, this is quite a quite a while later, mm -hmm. it was recorded that in what is now Zhejiang, Eastern China, that's in Eastern China, Zhejiang, it's, I don't know, 10 million packages of 1,000 to 10,000 sheets of toilet paper were manufactured annually. It's crazy. That was in the 14th century. Yeah. So they that were just, a, okay. they were all over it. Right. Rise of newspapers by the 18th century led to the use of newspapers and cheap editions of popular books for cleansing. Okay. And I know there's there's a joke there. When did we learn about germs? I mean, that yeah. was like 1500s or something. We figured out like germs are bad. Like this just seems like yeah. Okay. Because you're because you're my topics on toilet paper. Toilet paper. Yeah. Okay. So the joke, you know, the newspaper, you know. Did they, is that where they start, people started reading on the, reading on the toilet? Oh, I, yeah. I mean, that's, that can't be my joke, but that's the first thing I thought of sure. when I, that seems like it, that's probably a joke that they, they said like 10 years after they did that. But in many parts of the world, people considered using, using water, um, as well, which led to like bidets, things like that. Okay. And then, and it's the social norms I was talking about where it was seashells versus corn cobs versus sand, bidets versus toilet paper, you know. It's like in Europe, bidets are popular. In, in, in the United States, not so much. Seashells. Seashells. That's hard to say. I don't know why I <laughs> messed that up. But is an interesting one, considering maybe the topic that I'll do next week, which is the history of money. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't make a lot of sense, but it does if you know the but history you should of tell money. Me. Yeah, you should tell me about it. So that, that would be an interesting that they would wipe their ass with it too. Right. Okay, go on. Flush toilets oh, like really paved the way for the toilet paper toilet paper revolution. Okay. Yeah, because right. what were they doing with it before? Right. So in fifteen ninety six a flush toilet was invented and built for Britain's Queen Elizabeth I by her godson, Sir John Harrington. It was it, it was said that she refused to use it because it was so loud. So that's that's interesting. I've done I know a lot about Queen Elizabeth just because I find the whole, you know, King Henry, the thing fascinating. And yeah, the um, the the sister, the the Bray Bra 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 uh What was the freaking name? No idea. And Bolin. Bolin. Okay. Bolin sisters. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know a whole lot about that, but oh, I'll do a history. It book. is interesting though. Yeah. I, just, I remember learning a little bit about it. She was a redhead. School, but really? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, she said it was too noisy. You didn't use it. I just thought that was an interesting. Yeah. Fact. But the first patent for the flushing toilet was issued to a guy from England named Alexander Cummings in 1775. A lot of people say John T. Crapper invented the toilet. John T. Crapper? His name was John T. Crapper. Oh, Actually, he would have. Right. <laughs> well, a lot so of people say fun. that because it's so convenient. Right. Now, he did, he did have a company that did 
bath supplies, toilets, and other things like that. So do they call it crapper supplies? They, it says it's still in existence on the internet. I didn't look it up. Oh. I mean, but obviously that name stuck to sure. the toilet. So, mm -hmm. you know, but the, for, the patent was from, was in, from Alexander Cummings in 1775 in England. Okay. So with flush toilets, heavy paper would no longer work. You can't just roll up some toilet. You can't roll up a newspaper, you know. Oh, okay. You know, right. Stuff that we have to tell our kids, obvious, obvious shit like that. Yeah. So yeah, toilet paper. Okay. Joseph Gaetti. Let me tell you about this guy. Okay. Widely credited with being the inventor of modern commercially available toilet paper in the United States. Getty's medicated paper first introduced in 1857 was widely available as late as the 1920s. All right. So and then what happened? The great depression and he was just like went out of business. Well, they, they didn't say that, but it did look like the after world world war two, that's when it was like, you know, that's just, it doesn't seem that long ago, but no. they said that's when it really got popular. And I guess it's because probably what you were saying, you know, there's, they had other, they had real problems Yeah. before that. <laughs> so, and they really did. So it was sold in, in packages of flat sheets, water marked with the inventor's name. So even back then they were advertising to people. Sure thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the original advertisements, speaking of advertisements for the product, used the tagline, the greatest necessity of the age, Gaetti's medicated paper for the water closet. Refinement. That's what they called it, the water closet? Yeah. Well, they, they have that a lot now. Like I noticed when we go in, like if you go to a restaurant or establishment, sometimes it says WC on the. It stands for waters, water closet. Yeah. Water closet. Never knew that. Yeah. Why? So I have no idea. Okay. That's, you know, this is, as this as is just my observation. Know, WC water closet. Refinement of the quality of toilet paper has changed quite a bit over the years. And as late as 1930s, a selling point of the Northern Tissue Company, which, which you know, quilted, know, quilted Northern, yeah, okay, was the was that their tea, their toilet paper was splinter free. Oh, it's very, very so luxurious, very important, right, right. Uh, widespread adoption of the flush toilet increased the use of toilet paper since heavier paper caused clogs. Yeah, obviously, that's kind of what I was talking about before. Two ply toilet paper. Jennifer brought this up earlier. It was introduced in Britain in 1942 by St. Andrew Mills in Waltz Stow. The episode. Remember when I accidentally bought single ply toilet paper and I had to send an apology note to everyone? Yeah, that, the was, house? that was ridiculous. <laughs> we really, we really have was, nice problems these days. But right. Yeah. It was like a complete accident. Yeah, that was that was rough. Right. Get it? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah I do get it. Uh, that okay. So when I read when I was reading about the two ply, you know, people either love the Office show or they hate the Office show. Love the Office, but I love it. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite scenes is when Dwight takes over the office building as the landlord, and he's trying to figure out how to make save money, and they they. Somebody opens a door, one of the doors in the office, and his brother Moe's is deep, <laughs> deep plying two ply toilet paper. I remember that. Into one ply toilet paper. It's great. So that he could save money. Anyways, right. it just made me think of that. That was in like the later seasons, right? Michael wasn't on the show anymore. I, it was later. I don't remember I when think, exactly. I think so because I think he got fired from office manager after that. Oh, he was landlord. I don't remember. Yeah. Okay. Some, some, one of the seasons, though. Right. It, it exists. Uh, wet wipes. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm, you can see the chronologic yeah. thing going on here. People wet, got more fancy. Yeah. Got more bougie. Wet wipes were first introduced in the United Kingdom in the 1990s. More than 7 billion rolls of toilet paper are sold yearly in the United States, where an average of 23.6 rolls per capita per year is That's used. That's actually... I would have thought more than that. Really? Well, there's what? 400 million, I think maybe more people in the United States. Yeah. Well, what did I say? And think of like schools and households and just 23.6 rolls per person. You said 7 billion. 
7 billion in the United States. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. How many people did you say were in the United States? 400 million, maybe more. Is it that many? I thought we had less than that. Anyway, that's another topic for another day. Okay. So there are at least seven. Okay. I just want to, there's just an honorable mention, not exactly toilet paper related, but also very important to the toilet paper history. You know me. I really like going off on tangents. Yeah. Especially on your topics. Maybe I do it on mine too, but I just know I'm going to do it. So it seems like less of a tangent at the time. Yeah. You're very, you're extraordinarily inquisitive during mine. <laughs> It's it's almost annoyingly. I inquisitive. like that you called me inquisitive and not stupid. No, no, <laughs> it's not that. It's like a lot of questions that right. I don't know the answers. No, it's it's fine. I try, you know. Mm-hmm. So there are there are. I'm going to talk to you about toilet paper holders. Okay. Sure. Because where are, were they putting it before? Right. There are seven types. Okay. Okay. So just start picturing these in your head. I'm going to try and describe them. Okay. Number one. A horizontal piece of wire mounted on a hinge hanging from a door or wall. Now, when I think of this, I think of like outhouse, like, you know, it's like an afterthought. Yeah, we better hang this toilet paper somewhere. You you probably haven't seen it much. I haven't either. I think in Boy Scouts, maybe. Okay. You know, back back when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Okay. Number two, a horizontal axle axle recessed into a wall. This is This is when architects and designers had their shit together no pun intended. And they've got, (laughs) they have these bath, they have bathroom stalls and, and they've got a recess already built inside the wall. So it's just flush inside the wall. Also no pun intended. I I really didn't mean that, but sure. Sure. I'm not clever enough to come up with that. Are we going to bring up Larry David's bathroom design since we're talking about architectural design of bathrooms? I wasn't going to, but that was an awesome episode. (laughs) It really was. It really was. So he owns a coffee shop. And he just does some weird stuff in the coffee shop. One of which is he redesigns the modern toilet. Yeah. For men and women. For men and women. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. That was a great, that was great. He spent a lot of time on that. That was so so funny. Stupid. I mean, just the thought of how much money it would take to re-engineer a toilet, but he did it. Right. Okay. What am I on? Number three, a horizontal axle mounted on a free stranding frame. So this is, you know, when, they're like, let's let's put the stall here and bolt bolt a mm-hmm. number four, a freestanding vertical pole on a base. This is kind of like like I'm picturing soaring it. Like Yeah, well, I'm picturing like a towel holder on a on a counter, only it's for toilet paper. I've I, I've seen that, but I've seen them stacked like three and four high. That's just where you store extras. It. Okay. Uh, a wall mounted dispensing unit, usually containing more than one roll, commonly used in commercial or business. We we're familiar with mm-hmm. that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, usually it's impossible. Usually I notice it's when you rip it, it like rips like way up inside the thing. So you can't, uh, even worse is when the person before you rips it and it's like hanging on the floor of the bathroom. Yeah. I just, uh, I just don't deal with, deal well with things like that. And finally, and it seems like we've been doing this for a while, but this is the end, um, the end of the toilet paper holders. Okay. I still have a little more after that. Okay. A wall mounted dispensing unit. Like a progress bar. This I like is, it. Thank this you. one is like the deluxe, in my opinion. And okay. I've never been to a place nice enough to see this, but I can picture it. Okay. A wall mounted dispensing unit with tissue interleaved in an S type fold so that the user can extract one tissue at a time. So it's like a Kleenex box. What, I'm thinking what is Kleenex. It, like a four ply? It's like, like bloop, bloop, toilet paper? Like... Well, you know, you pull one and then another one comes up and you just got to be like so thick you only need one something like that yeah no me neither. i don't get to go to no. fancy place i don't i don't do fancy stuff very good does a person hand it to you also oh jeez. <laughs> so seth wheeler of albany new york obtained the earliest united states patent for toilet papers toilet paper and dispensers mm-hmm. so you know that's pretty notable and toilet paper dispensed from rolls was popularized when Scott Paper Company began marketing it in 1980. I think Scott is what I what we buy most of the really? time. I just buy whatever's on sale when when I'm in charge. But and that was 18 that was 8 did I say 1990? It was 1890. Oh, my bad. Okay. 
1990s. That's that was really not that long ago. Right. And finally, I wanted to share the darker history of toilet paper. Fuck yeah. This is where the drama comes. Okay. Okay. Orientation of toilet paper on rolls. Oh, yeah. So it's been a point of contention with homeowners and janitors. Over, under. Since the first horizontal axle mounted toilet paper holder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Over, under. Do you do? What do you do? And it's caused. Wait, what do you do? I. I don't think about it at all when, if I'm replacing. It's just whatever side's on there. Okay. Well, will you start to think about it and do over? Sure. Thanks. If it means Can something. Can I tell you why? Because if when you do under, it like, like the excess is like going around, like leans up against the back of it in the wall. When you do over, it doesn't do that. I'll do it for you. I don't see the difference, but I'll do it for you. Because I care. Thank you. So, yeah, it caused problems throughout history, and I, d I did some digging, and the Hatfield and McCoy oh, fuck, yeah. quarrel mm -hmm. stemmed from, actually, I'm making this up, but. Damn it. Like, there is some, there's some real, there's some, I could just see, like, families breaking up, and, yeah. like, we, we just almost got in a fight there, because if I wanted to, if I wanted to take a stand. If you wanted to plant your flag This could there, be the last podcast. It could be the last podcast. So, that's all I got. That's the history of toilet paper. Come on. Tell me a story about the Hatfield McCoys fighting over toilet paper. I know you can do it. No, that's. Oh, like a made up one. Yeah. I just, I just, I mean, I kind of did. They started the whole feud and then they started killing each other. And... Over toilet paper. Yeah. But it was, again, that's made up. Okay. I wish it were true. Okay. Thanks, babe. Yeah. That was so informative. That's where, that's where we're at can't wait to see how we bridge this next week me too i already forgot what i said episode i said i was gonna do next week <laughs> seashell uh money money history of money seashells money okay yeah all right and don't forget to make my coat popular Ugh. i need to be able to hang on to that guy yeah i guess i'll let you have that as a thing not the coat you trying to get people to get on your side all right i like entertaining you thanks Love you. Love you too. All right. Bye, Thanks, everybody. everyone. Bye. Thank you all for listening. That's a wrap for today. Remember, this is not just a podcast. It's an interactive experience. If you've got a burning topic you want us to try and butcher next, drop it in the comments below. And if we pick your brainchild, you might just find yourself sitting in the hot seat as our honorary guest host. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode and follow us on all of our listening platforms. Until next time, stay curious.